We'll let that marinate in the chat room. And hopefully now we've got the great Kayla Santiago. Good morning, Kayla. How are you? Busy and hoping uh, this works. Connection in the office is a little bit spotty here today. So my apologies for the internet issues. All good. Are we checking in from DC? Are you back in the uh, Philadelphia stomping grounds? Is Where are we checking in from this morning? I'm in the office in Salisbury, Maryland right now. Had a really, really early day today. Usually kind of start my office day at noon, but we were in here at 8.30 in the morning. So a lot of busy things. It's that time of year where everybody's going home for the holidays. But, uh, you know, it's work, work, work for us people in sports. Yeah, well, buckle up. Uh, We're hoping to see you out at the tailgate takeover January 1st if you're coming home. That'll be fun. And, um, by the way, were you you the – unnamed caller who ordered 35 cheesesteaks sent to be delivered to Doug Peterson there yesterday. Was that you? Honestly, I wish I could take credit for that idea because I saw that on Twitter this morning and I was like, this is absolutely phenomenal. Doug Peterson, coach of the people. He deserves it. And he knew what he was doing. He got that one maybe for Philadelphia too. Oh man. I'll tell you, it kind of knocked a little bit of the luster off of this matchup. I was really like, you know, looking forward to the Cowboys, Eagles, Christmas Eve, but you know, the Cowboys lost to the Jaguars. Jalen Hurts gets hurt. Uh, the Eagles have the playoffs kind of clinched. They're still getting trying to get that number one seed, but you know, no Jalen, not a lot at stake, but still a big time matchup for any Eagles and Cowboys fan, correct? No matter what, I mean, the fans are going to bring the energy, the teams are going to bring the energy, especially after you know all the slack that Micah Parsons was kind of talking about in the locker room of the Cowboys and not worrying about their game, worrying about the game two weeks from the time that that statement was said. So I think no matter what, whether Jalen Hurts plays or not, this is going to be a matchup that everybody's going to be excited for. The link is going to be rocking. Um, We don't know if Jalen Hurts is going to play yet. I'm fingers crossed hoping that he doesn't because I think it would be smart to sit in. You don't want to risk any further injury, but no matter what, it's Eagles Dallas. If their record's, were no wins and a ton of losses, it would still be a great matchup to look into. So excited to see it on Christmas Eve. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, Sariani is going to have to put his foot down here, I think, because it, it's really my understanding this injury, it's more of a pain tolerance type of situation. It's not, it's not like he's going to go out there and re injure this. It's really just like what he's comfortable with. So, like, I think on Tuesday, Sariani's like, oh, he's attacking the rehab. Oh, well, great. He just got hurt. Um, but it really has to do with, like, the strength and the mobility of the throwing arm. And, um, you know, Jimmy G had this injury earlier in the year and didn't miss any time. Same thing with Kyler Murray. Um, Bryce Young, the Alabama quarterback, if you remember, had almost an mm-hmm. identical hit. He only missed one game. And what if I told you this? C.J. Stroud suffered a sprained A.C. joint in the shoulder. He didn't miss any games. In fact, the only quarterback to really have missed any significant time uh, was Drew Locke, who suffered this injury, I think, two years ago, and he missed two games. So to me, this is not a short-term panic. It's more of, like, managing the situation and finding the fine line of, like, keeping Jalen fresh because I agree. I wouldn't play in this week. I'd play it by ear next week. But, yo, he's got to play again before the playoffs. Otherwise, they run the risk of Jalen Hurts not suiting up again until January 20th. Yeah, and I completely agree with that. I just think this week and the multitude of the rivalry, you know it's going to be physical. You know a lot of hard hits are going to be coming to you. In my opinion, you sit Jalen Hurts this week. Knowing the guy that he is and the player that he is, he's probably going to want to be out there. But you have to think of the longevity of the situation. And also, you want to make sure that he's well-rested enough that he can go into the playoffs and not be in so much pain. Because we, our Eagles fans, want to 100% Jalen Hurts. But I do agree with you. We've talked about it before. He can't sit for three weeks, no matter what the Eagles record is. He at least has to play in that Saints game. And if he's not ready, even if that last game of the season is a throwaway game, he has to play because he's got to be fresh. You can't go into the playoffs if you get that by. And then all of a sudden, expect Jalen Hurts to play after having a month off of real game football. Yeah, we're talking to Kayla Santiago, Delmarva Sports. I want to pick your brain about that Bears game, Kayla, because a lot of criticism is coming in on Shane Steichen, the offensive play calling. I look at it a little bit differently. And suddenly now in week 15, people want to be upset 
that Jalen Hurts is carrying the ball 17 times. That's been a constant theme on this show. Uh, Nine out of the 14 games, Jalen Hurts has had double-digit carries, yet this week is the week that fans decidedly wanted to be upset about it because Jalen got hurt. Jalen himself said, hey, it's not the first time that I've gotten hurt. It's just the first time it's been so public. Uh, What was your takeaway just from the overall game plan, the play calling, and just the plan of attack? A lot of people think that the Eagles played down to their opponent. I felt like the Bears came ready to play, and they had a very big home field advantage. That cold hits different up there in the Windy City. I will just say that I was kind of like covering my eyes a little bit and turning away from the TV every time I saw Jalen Hurts get hit. We talked about it before on the show that the amount of times that he runs the ball is sometimes tough to watch because with a mobile quarterback, you're allowing yourself to possibly get harder hits, even possibly an injury. And seeing that and seeing him go down was kind of just like, I can't be reliving 2017 again. Like, Please do not do this. But, you know, I think that Jalen Hurts definitely is a guy that was able to come back up from it and is going to be okay. And with that being said, I think the Philadelphia Eagles didn't necessarily play down to the Chicago Bears, but I don't think they expected to get the Bears that they got. I think they expected to walk in there and get the Justin Fields that has been playing all year with not a lot of help. And the Bears came to play. They have nothing to lose at this point. They're going to play, and they're going to play hard. And I just think the Eagles weren't expecting that type of fight. I think they were expecting that for the Dallas game on Christmas Eve, but maybe they didn't prepare as much in their offensive game planning for the Bears. And you could kind of see that on the field. A win is a win at the end of the day, but at the same time, I don't think it was playing down to the opponent. I just think that they weren't expecting the Bears to come in as fiery as they did. Well, I didn't see any chat room people checking in from Orchard Park, but if you're in the upstate New York area or Buffalo, buckle up because I have here, I'm putting the Buffalo Bills on upset alert this week. They go into Chicago. I don't think they're as balanced as the Eagles. I don't think they have a run game like the Eagles. And check this out. You thought it was cold this week? Check this out. A bomb cyclone. Storm expected to unleash snow, wind, and freezing cold temperature is set to hit Chicago. It was three degree wind chill, 18 degrees come kickoff time. Buffalo Bills better buckle up. I'm telling you, this Justin Fields is a special town. You heard Sariani say it. You heard Hertz say it. You heard Brandon Graham say it. You heard Javon Hargrave say it. Almost every single player and coach came away, myself included, so thoroughly impressed with Justin Fields. He might F around and find out and go beat and knock off Josh Allen this week. How about that? I like Justin Fields, and I liked him when he was drafted. The thing is, he just doesn't have a lot of help, but I think you give him a decent receiving core and you give him a little bit more protection. Justin Fields can be a very, very good quarterback. And, yeah, I mean, I was as surprised as you were. Being able to play in those elements is not easy, and, yes, Buffalo has played in the snow and they've dealt with that so far this year, but Justin Fields now back to back weeks, the wind in his face. He does not care. It's going to be interesting to see. I think Buffalo still pulls that out just because they're used to the cold and they can play in that environment. But still, I wouldn't be surprised if the bears are able to pull it out because they almost did it against the Eagles. Yeah. And Matthew Peters in the chat. Welcome to the show. Buckle up. Thank you for the correction. It's in Buffalo regardless. Still, it's going to be cold and the bears are ready. For that kind of party. Uh, Buffalo needed, by the way, a last second field goal to knock off the Dolphins in the snow. I think that's going to be a very interesting matchup, as is the Cowboys game against the Philadelphia Eagles Christmas Eve. Let's focus our attention back there. Kayla obviously hurts is out. In comes Flint, Gardner Menshu. Under the guidance of the one Mike Leach, he gave a beautiful eulogy I heard yesterday. Dallas Goddard activated From the IR, he'll be back. I imagine we're going to see more 12 and 13 personnel sets with the return of Goddard. How do you see the Eagles offense adapting and adjusting with Gardner Menchu as opposed to Jalen Hurts back in the saddle? I think it's going to be a little bit more run heavy. And I know coming off the Bears week, you might say, what do you mean, Kayla, run heavy? They literally did that a week ago. But I think that there's not going to be as trust with Garner Minshew. I think he still will air it out. And when you have A.J. Brown in the field, he's going to make a play. Dallas Goddard being able to come in and give you some 
of those slam passes as well. But I think it's going to be more of a run heavy game. I just think it's going to take a little bit of time for Gardner Minshew to really connect to the receivers. I wouldn't be surprised, especially if the Eagles are down in the second half, if you see him throwing a little bit more. But I think the game plan going in is going to be run it down their throats and see where you can get with the run game. Just for the pure fact that it's not Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts this year has been the most accurate he's ever been in his career. And Gardner Minshew, you know, stepping up into this position if Hurts cannot play, it's not going to be the same connection right off the bat. You know, I think you're going to see a lot of passes downfield that Jalen Hurts would have made that might miss just because they don't play together every single day. They're not getting the same reps in practice. They're not playing on the field at the same time. So I think first half you'll see a lot of running the ball and then maybe second half adjustments if they're down work on that passing game a little bit. But I'm expecting a lot of passes that will be incompletions to at least start it off just based on the connection and reps. Yeah, but you know what? Menchu was pretty effective last year when he stepped in. I think it was 20 for 25, 238 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. So he played efficient football. And I'll tell you what, when you have yak monsters, right, yards after the catch, A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, I swear to God, Kayla, I mean – I haven't seen a pair of tandem wide receivers run cross patterns as effectively since like Jerry Rice and John Taylor back in the eighties were doing it. I mean, you could throw the ball to either one of these guys, AJ or Devonta five yard slants, you blink, they can go the distance. So like to me, just get the ball out, be efficient in the short to intermediate games, let your wide receivers do the work. And by the way, Dallas Goddard is the biggest yak monster of them all. He led the league in yards after catch before that injury, and that was including receivers, running backs, tight ends. So to me, it's like, hey, let your wide receivers make the plays. Just get the ball in their hands. And, oh, yeah, by the way, Miles Sanders, buckle up. He should have a big, big day. Oh, yeah. And I I don't think it's not that Gardner Minshew can't do it because we've seen and we know who Gardner Minshew is. It's just the pure fact that – This team has been so effective with Jalen Hurts able to run the ball and able just to do everything that he can do and pass so accurately. And now it's going to be interesting, right? Gardner Minshew is not as much of a mobile quarterback as Jalen Hurts is. So you might see strict handoffs, no running the ball as the quarterback, and strict passes. There's not going to be as much development in plays, I think. But once again, I do think it's going to be a run-heavy game, and I think Miles Sanders is really going to have a chance to show what he's got. He's been very healthy all season. He's had some really good games this season. And not that the Cowboys are at full strength, but they have most of their main guys in. So I think we can see a pretty run-heavy game between both sides this week. Yeah, and if I recall correctly, you know, Micah Parsons had like a banged-up knee or something, I think, the last time he faced the Eagles. And he, he, he popped up on the injury report again yesterday, I believe, with an illness. I don't think he practiced. But if I recall correctly, I, I remember the Eagles running right at Micah Parsons. And I remember Micah Parsons struggling. Uh, uh, Lane Johnson it, took his lunch money. And by the way, I saw on the Jacob Sports Twitter page, 938 snaps in, since Lane Johnson has a, allowed a sack. That's unbelievable. Um But how do you see Micah Parsons, his impact on this particular matchup after yapping his mouth? Uh, I didn't see him make much of an impact the first go around. How about this second rodeo? As much as I don't want to say this, I do think that Micah Parsons is going to get his way just a little bit more in this game. I don't think you're going to be able to completely shut him down like you were in the first matchup. I could be completely wrong. I don't think he's going to be the Micah Parsons that everybody knows and the defensive beast that he is. Lane Johnson and this whole offensive line is really going to have to put in a lot of work this week. But I think especially if Jalen Hurts doesn't play, you're going to have a little bit of an easier time getting to Gardner Minshew because of the offensive line is not able to pick up a block. Garner Minshew can't roll out as or is as quick as Jalen Hurts. Now, I think that he's able to do so. I just think that Micah Parsons is going to have a little bit more of a target this week. And I also think for the Philadelphia Eagles, you're going to have to be quick with Garner Minshew. If you see that pressure coming, air it out when you can. Make sure A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith are running those routes so that you can be able to get the ball out of his hands quickly or hand it right off to Miles Sanders. Like I said, I don't think it's going to be the Micah Parsons game, but I also don't think it's going to be the guy can't even get to the quarterback like he did in the first meeting. This guy is the real deal. I think the Eagles will come in with an even better game plan this week, but if Jalen Hurts doesn't play, I think Micah Parsons maybe throughout the game will have his way just a few times. 
Is he the real deal, though? Because I'm looking at this game like, you know what, Micah? You ran your mouth. You, you didn't show up against Jacksonville. You didn't show up against the Eagles last game. Like, you want to talk the talk. Are you going to really walk the walk? I want to see it. I want to believe it because, you know, to be a big-time player in the National Football League, you can't just disappear for weeks at a time. I want to see this guy show up. I want to see him make plays. You know, he wants to be this big-time player. You can't just disappear in games. I want to see Micah Parsons do something about it. Otherwise, he, he, he might not be as good as we're making him out to be. I, I don't know. I want to I see mean- yeah, I mean, we've seen this in a lot of Eagles-Dallas mashups. It seems every time the opposite team likes to talk and say, you know, when the Eagles said Dallas was choke artists and then they lose to Dallas and Micah Parsons not saying this. It's going to be interesting, though, because is it the injury of Micah Parsons? Is he a little bit banged up? Or is this stint of games really just kind of, quote-unquote, exposing the real player that he is? I think this is a big test, especially if Jalen Hurts doesn't play. I mean, you had an excuse in that first meeting, maybe, but you don't have any excuses in the second meeting. Like I said, I think he's going to be better than he was in that first meeting, but it raises the question of, all right, who is Micah Parsons if he wasn't great against Jacksonville and now for the second straight time, the Philadelphia Eagles were able to stop him when he's quote-unquote a defensive beast. Yeah, we shall see. Uh, I saw a question come in. Rosania, the RPO is still going to be a heavy, heavy influence. They're still going to do – the zone reads with Gardner as opposed to Jalen though, it'll be more about, do I hand it to miles or do I pull it and throw it where Mm -hmm. Jalen is more of a, Hey, he's more of that triple threat. He can hand it to miles. He can take it and run it, or he can throw it over the top. So I think you'll still see the RPO, the zone read offense. You'll just see more of a two dimensional version, but it's going to stay in the playbook. And I think it's going to be an opportunity for Shane Steichen to kind of build his head coaching credentials here with the different quarterback. Um, Now I saw Dak Prescott through seven interceptions in his last four games, both Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy came out and said, Dak Prescott played at an extremely high level against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They said, when he plays like that, we can win ball games. And Mike McCarthy, when asked about it, in terms of advice that he would give to Dak Prescott, he said, keep firing. So the Cowboys are going to be looking to come out here. They signed T.Y. Hilton. They activated James Washington. This kid uh, uh, from Ohio State, Noah Brown's been making plays. Oh, by the way, they still got uh, C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup. But as ESPN reminded us just this morning, the Eagles were voted the best secondary award Uh, How do you like this Darius Slay, James Bradbury matchup with the second go around as the Cowboys receivers are a little bit more healthier, a little bit more deeper here this go around? All I'm going to say is Dak Prescott could have had the game of his life against Jacksonville, but the Jacksonville Jaguars are not the Philadelphia Eagles. I think the Philadelphia Eagles are not even going to let the ball get out of his hands quickly enough for him to be able to make these passes and these completions. I think Dak Prescott's going to have a really nice few connections, but I think that front line is going to pressure the heck out of him. We know the offensive line of the Dallas Cowboys, and I just think that the Eagles all around defensively are a lot better. At Are they as healthy as they were in that first meeting? Don't really know, but I think this is a big game for them. I think Darius Slay steps up big time in this game. Is going to have himself a phenomenal contest. And once again, Dak Prescott can be the quarterbacks of all quarterbacks against the Jacksonville Jaguars and still lose in that game, but they're not the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Eagles, once again, have proven that they are probably the most complete team in the NFL this year with the teams they have faced. And I just think that going into this game in the link, that Dak Prescott's not – not really going to have his way this time. Yeah, I agree, though. I do I do think the Jaguars will be a team to be reckoned with in the near future. They got a good-looking uh, a young team to build around. Uh, we're running out of time, unfortunately, Caleb. We'll have you back on next week. Of course, the tailgate takeover January 1st, parking lot G against the Saints game. Buckle up. But first, we got to get past the Cowgirls. Give us a little score prediction before you go. I'm going to say it's going to end up being 24 to 14. I think it's a close game, and I think the Eagles are able to pull away. Also, I wouldn't be mad if the Eagles dropped this game because we've talked about the possibility of facing them in the playoffs. Super tough to beat a team three times in a row in the same season. 
Gardner Minshew plays. It might be a dropped game, but I still think if Minshew goes out there, you still got the rest of your squad, and he's a baller. So I think he can go win the game for the Philadelphia Eagles, too. I'm taking Eagles on Christmas Eve, and hopefully it's a very, very Merry Christmas for Philadelphia fans. Gardner Minshew can win it for the Eagles. He can win one for the Gipper. Good old Mike Leach watching down on us. Kayla, always appreciate the time. Enjoy your Christmas. We'll see you soon, and uh, buckle up. Go Birds. (laughs) <laughs> Can't wait. Thank you guys so much. Go birds. All right. There you have it. The great Kayla Santiago, Philadelphia's finest. And uh, yeah, I see a lot of newbies in the show. Kadar Malik. Yes. Kayla's familia here at the NFL draft Bible.com. Uh, she's co-hosted our draft coverage for us and uh, check that out. The NFL draft Bible.com guys, our 21st year of coverage. You see the grays coming in, right? Uh, we've got over 700 scouting reports for 2023 and beyond. It's unbelievable. Uh, It's a can't stop, won't stop situation. Of course, the official content provider of Sports Illustrated. We're going to take a quick commercial break, pay some bills, smash that like button. It's all brought to you by Ocean Casino Resorts, your home for the Pondley Hockey pre and post game. When we come back, we're going to cross enemy lines with Kyle Humans of DallasCowboys.com. Don't go anywhere. Post game show with Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps.